everybody it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio. Today I'm going to start quilting in the body of the Dresden Plate Quilt and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to handle the background of the blocks, how I'm going to handle those half blocks, and how I'm going to quilt the Dresden Plates themselves. I'm getting ready to do the background in the blocks and I wanted to show you how I'm going to go about that. Now I drew out the pattern on some tracing paper and I used that to trace the uh, corner that I wanted to use and then hand drew in the design and I'm going to use some templates to help me these are some circle templates that I have and you can get these in um, drafting departments and uh, stores like well there are drafting stores but like Hobby Lobby has a drafting section and you can get these kinds of templates there and uh, I'm also going to use my uh, rotary cutting ruler. This is a six and a half by 12 and a half inch ruler. And I'm using this to get the 45 degree mark here because I want that to help center my design. So I'm just going to use my water soluble marker and draw my line there. And then the next thing I want to do is to use my large circle and uh, make a guideline for how big I want my flower to be. So this is going to be a three inch circle which is here and this template has marks on it so that I can see how to center this up. So I'm going to just line up two of those um, two of these marks along the line I drew and then I'm going to judge the distance by just by eye as to uh, where all of this is going to fit in. So I think pull it down just a little bit more. And this will all be quilted freehand so it's not going to be perfect. It is, it's, um, you know, it isn't a computer quilted so it's not going to be perfect. And then I want to find the center so I'm going to use those lines again and I need to make a center point here. And that is for this template. I want to use um, let me find out which circle I used. Okay, this is a, I think a seven seven eighths of an inch circle. Okay, I'm going to use this one says 22, so I guess that's 22. I don't know, millimeters maybe. And it has markings too so that I can center all of that up. But just line those uh, lines up with the lines on the template and circle and draw the circle in. So this will be the center of the flower and um, I'm going to go ahead and draw in the petals. So that will help me with my spacing. And then I want to do three leaves branching off each side. So I would be coming out through the center and putting in a leaf and then coming to one side and doing a leaf and then down again and do another leaf. And I'm wanting to find my center points here which I can see from the piecing here and actually from the line that has been um, pressed into the background fabric so I could find the center to applique the Dresden plate onto. So on this side, I would come out, do a leaf there, leaf here, and a leaf here. So that's how that's going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the machine over and I'm going to quilt a couple of these so that you can see how that works. And then I'm going to quilt the Dresden plate itself. The first thing I'm going to do is to quilt the center of the flower and then I'll do the petals and then I'll do the leaves. So I'm just going to pick a place to start and since I want to end at one of these <coughs> areas here to branch out with my leaves, I'm just going to start here. So I'm on stitch regulated mode and I'm at 10 stitches per inch right now. move this out of my way. I'm going to do the first petal and 
I'm going to cut my threads. There we go. Oops, stuck to my finger. Okay, all the way around. Now this flower is considerably smaller than what I did in the blue border up here, but um, I think it looks fine. Now on my paper draft of this, I had four feather or four leaves in um, each side. I'm not sure that's going to work, but I'm going to to see because that is just. We'll see how this works. I think I just need to freehand it and let it go. And I'm out of bobbin thread. Okay, so that is four leaves in there. When I draw out my designs, I never want to feel like I have to stick with those. I like to take some leeway if I need to and adjust the design so um, that's what I'm doing here so we've got that one done and then I'm going to do the one right next to it so now I'm going to do the flower on this side. And do the center first. And then do the petals. And I'm going to stop here and cut the tails there. Get them out of my way. Come down and do my leaves. And then I'm going to break the thread and do the other side. I could follow that vine all the way through, but um, I think this will just be easier. So I'm just going to break threads. So that's all quilted in and let me spray this for you so maybe we can see the quilting a little bit better without the pen marks on it. So here's the quilting. You can see that a little bit better now and I think that turned out okay. I may make a little bit of an adjustment um, with that larger flower, maybe pull it up a little bit higher um, on the next block so um, the first block is usually kind of a test to see how things are going to go and but I think it's good enough I'm not going to rip that out but I do think I want to raise that flower just a little bit more into the corner of the block and uh, kind of go from there I'm trying to see if I can get an overall view of this block um, but here is the quilting I used the water spray bottle on um, the block to get the blue marks out and there's the design in the background so far and I think that's good enough I think that's about all I want to put in this I was trying to decide if I needed to go in and add either more leaves or um, maybe some swirls or something but I think I need to just kind of let it go at this point and um, decide maybe later if it needs more but I think it's pretty good okay next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to handle this block up here this is the half block 
that I put in at the end of the row in order to get this um, staggered look between the locks so between the Dresden plates so I'm going to show you how I'm going to handle this section next now there's all different ways that I could deal with these blocks here um, I can just put a completely different motif in here from anywhere else in the quilt or I can follow what's going on in the Dresden blocks here and kind of copy that and to do that I need the templates that I drew to um, fold in the edges of these blocks so that gives me just the right curve that I need and then I'd also need to find how far down from the edge of the block that is so I'll just use my ruler and it's an inch and a half so if I come up here and place my ruler an inch and a half then uh, well it needs to go this way there we go and then I know that this needs to go here and then I need to center it and it looks like I've got that pretty well there so I know how to fit my design in so I've got two templates here and we get oh I've got three get some of these out of the way and I can see my center here so I know where to end the end the design since I already have this cut out here I've got that I think since I have feathers in the outer border of this quilt I will put feathers in here so what I want to do anyway I still want to do the flowers in here but I think I'm going to do a feather wreath in here instead so um, I've already got my mark here and I think I'll go ahead and leave that there so it would be a matter of just quilting in a feather wreath so this would be my outside guideline as to where the feathers would end and this would be the spine of the feathers and um, they would be coming in kind of like this so these would be long feathers but um, that they won't be the focal point of the quilt so I don't think it'll be a problem so anyway this will be what this will look like and then in the center um, I'm going to do the flower in there so I will do the flower in here also and we'll just come out and do do that do a half feather or a half we'll come back and then do a half flower in there so that's my plans for the corner so I'm going to go ahead I've already drawn my diagonal line so I'm going to draw in my other guidelines and do my three inch circle up here and I have pulled that up a little bit from what I did over here I think that gives it a little bit more breathing space I'm going to go ahead and quilt this in and uh, let you get an idea of what that looks like and now I'm going to get a circle template so that I can quilt this spine in and then quilt the feathers in And this is the smallest circle template I have this is a three inch and it's it's bigger than what this circle is so I have to kind of adjust for that so do the feathers and once again I'm just going to do this freehand I'm not going to be following so much the drawn feathers that I have in here
I'm gonna sneak over to the center and then do the petals. There we go. And then I'll do the other corner and then I'll uh, spray this and we'll see if we can get a good look at what this looks like. Okay, there's what that looks like. And I think that looks okay. I think that'll be good. It's um, a half circle, kind of copies what's going on with the Dresdens as since they're, you know, circles. But it's still different because they're feathers and um, it's got the cop copying the floral motif that we have in the corners over here. So um, I kind of like that. Next I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to quilt the Dresden plates themselves. I think what I'm going to do is just stitch in the ditch. So I'm just going to go down each block, stitch in the ditch over here, and then stitch down and just stitch in the ditch all the way around here. Um, that way I'm not covering up the fabrics either. What I also could do would be stitch right down the center. And that way I'm, I'm not having to worry about hitting the ditch. So that is another option. So if you don't like stitching in the ditch, but you want to do um, like a straight line quilting in your, especially if you have a Dresden plate, you might want to try that. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and find the center of this circle. Now this circle is kind of an oblong. It's not completely round. So um, this larger circle works pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and get me a straight edge and I'm going to find the center the best that I can on this thing. And then switch over to the smaller. I was using 22 my machine back just a little bit and then I'll do my petals now these are going to be bigger than what's in the background but um, it's the same design another thing I could do is also make that circle a little bit bigger which I may do that might try the 24 instead since it is a bigger circle I went from a three inch to a three and a half inch circle so I'll go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. I'm going to start with the center and do the center of the flower and then do the petals and I'm using the white thread and I'm going to stop and trim my thread tails here. And then I'm going to come up here and start stitching in the ditch. And I'm going to go ahead and quilt around that part of the circle. And when I get done, every other blade will have been, been stitched in the ditch here and in there. And then I'll come back around and do another stitching around that so that everything is um, stitched down. So this will take extra time. But it's kind of a it's a repetitive motion, so it's not going to be um difficult. It's just time consuming. Okay, 
I made it all the way around and I'm gonna go ahead and cut my threads and actually I don't think I'm going to stitch in the ditch around the circle again because <clears throat> these blades are so close together I mean they're only a half an inch wide and I think that is plenty of quilting to hold this down so um, let me spray the center with some water and give you a close-up look of what this looks like here's the finished block and I think it turned out pretty well um, I'm pretty happy with that I like the floral motif and uh, that's copied here in the center and you can see some stray threads in there that I can I can pull those out with a tiny crochet hook and I'll do that after it's dry because I don't want to damage the fabric while it's wet but um, there we go I wanted to give you a view of what this first row looks like now that I've got it all quilted um, I'm starting out at the other end and I am hoping this will show up better on the video than it does through the camera lens but um, you can see I still have the markings in and I'll, I'll spray those out and then show you what it looks like after I get done with that but there is uh, one of the corners and then just go on down the row and you see some black marks I got those from flipping the quilt over the back of the machine to show you how the back looked on the last video and that just rubbed up against something I'm not sure what probably the wheels wheel tracks or something but it's looking pretty good now this is time consuming um, I came down here this morning and started working about 11 o'clock and it's now 10 minutes to 12 so it took 50 minutes to do the rest of the row in what I had done was I had done this block and this section here before so one row minus a block and a half took 50 minutes so it's going to be time consuming and that's not counting all the marking I did all of that beforehand so it's going to take time but I'm liking the way it's turning out so far I did switch my stitch length made it shorter it's now at 12 stitches per inch um, because with this being a little more detailed with the flower petals and the leaves it really needed a shorter stitch anyway here we are so far now I'm going to go ahead and spray this and uh, show you what that looks like after I've got it all the blue marks out now the marks are all gone I just it's still wet I just sprayed it but there we go there's the first block that I did and there's the half block and I'm just going all the way down the row there so I'm really happy with this I think this is gonna look nice and it's a little bit different from something I've done before so um, I think that's nice for a change change things around a little bit there we go and that's what it's looking like so far so next week I hope to have this quilt completed and then I'll give you um, a video tour of what this quilt looks like all quilted in so I hope you enjoyed this video and I, if you like it I hope you will click the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so and I hope to see you in the next video thanks for watching for more quilting ideas click on the video links and to keep up with my newest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.